Hi, Joe from Killing the Tech here, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different with this thing, the Motorola Edge Plus 2022 Edition, also known as the Moto Edge Pro 30, depending on where you live. Motorola came out with this device last year as their flagship smartphone, and I recently got a chance to pick one up. The model that I have here comes with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor, 8GB of RAM, and 512GB of internal storage. The screen on it is a 6.7-inch OLED display, and it comes with a 4800mAh internal battery. Since the device has been around for a while, and plenty of solid reviews for it already exist, I'm not going to review this thing. Instead, I'd like to spend some time today going over the gaming, and mainly game emulation aspect of this device. Before we get into the video though, I want to mention four things. First, the disclaimer. I paid for this device with my own funds, all the opinions you're about here are my own, nobody is paying for this video, and no one other than yours truly has reviewed this video prior to its posting. Secondly, I will be referring to this device as either the Moto Edge Plus or the Edge Plus throughout this video. Just know that I'm referring to this specific 2022 edition of the Motorola Edge Plus whenever I do so. Thirdly, this Moto Edge Plus is running Android 12. As of recording this video, Motorola is yet to roll out the Android 13 update onto this device. Fourthly, throughout the video I'll be using this Xbox controller that I have paired with the Moto Edge Plus over Bluetooth. With that out of the way, let's talk gaming on the Moto Edge Plus 2022. Looking at native Android games first, other existing reviews of the Moto Edge Plus have already showcased this aspect of the device, so I'm going to keep this part brief. Here, I'm running the mobile port of GTA San Andreas with visual effects, shadows, and car reflections on max settings, and with traffic mode set to heavy. This is an older port, but entry and mid-tier Android phones still tend to struggle to play this game at max graphical settings. The Edge Plus, though, is running the game smoothly at these settings without issue. And that's basically native Android gaming on the Moto Edge Plus in a nutshell. Which sounds like an overstatement, but this device with this set of specs can handle most Android games that are currently out there and is more than capable of running the popular mobile titles like Fortnite, Genshin Impact, Minecraft, etc. and can run those games at high graphical settings if not extreme or max graphical settings depending on the game. The Moto Edge Plus can just handle native Android games. Enough said. Moving over to talking emulators on this device, for the sake of time, I'm not going to be going over every older system that I've emulated here, I'm just going to be brief about some of the older systems. I mean, the 8-bit and 16-bit games can be emulated quite well on lower-end entry-level smartphones nowadays, so it's obviously not an issue with the Edge Plus, and it's a similar story for emulating Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, etc. Moving up to 3DS emulation. Using RetroArch with the Citra Core, I was able to run Garfield Kart, Mario 3D Land, as well as some of the LEGO 3DS games. They all were playable, ran at full speed, and many could be played at 3x or 4x resolution, depending on the game. From what I've seen here, I suspect that the Edge Plus can handle a majority of the 3DS games that are currently compatible with this emulator. Moving over to N64 emulation. For this one, I'm using RetroArch with the Mupin Plus Next Core. I tried running some of the usual N64 games on this thing, Wave Race 64, Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, etc. And they all ran at full speed, which was expected. Along with those titles, I also tried running Star Wars Rogue Squadron and GoldenEye 007, which are harder N64 titles to emulate. Both games ran at full speed on this device without any apparent issues. From what I've seen, I think the Moto Edge Plus can run a majority of N64 games as long as they're compatible with this emulator, and although I wasn't able to test out upscaling or anything like that and had to stick with native resolution due to a bug found with the emulator, I generally suspect this device is more than capable of running N64 games at 2x, 3x resolution, maybe even higher than that. Moving on to PSP emulation with the PPSSPP emulator. For this, I'm using the standard version of PPSSPP, and I've stuck to using Vulkan since all the games that I tried ran well with it. I tried running a variety of PSP games, including GTA Liberty City Stories, GTA Vice City Stories, Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, LEGO Harry Potter, and others. All the games that I tried ran at full speed at 5x resolution, and some of the games were even playable at 10x resolution. As long as it's compatible with this emulator, PSP games are just gonna run well on the Edge Plus. Next up, we have PS2 emulation with the Ether SX2 emulator, and I gotta say the Edge Plus just handles PS2 emulation like a boss. I mean all the PS2 games that I tried just ran at full speed without any perceivable issues, and not only were those games playable, they were playable at 2x resolution with widescreen patch enabled whenever available. Some of the games I tried were even playable at 3x or 4x resolution depending on the game. And I tried a lot of games including classic titles like Yakuza, Yakuza 2, the PS2 version of GTA Vice City, Lego Batman, War of Monsters, etc. 
even tried Shadow of the Colossus, which if I remember correctly is a harder to emulate PS2 title, and it ran stable at 2x resolution. Like, it's just a really good experience. And really, it's a result of a well-made emulator running on a device that has the specs or power needed to get the job done. To be clear, it's not like I tried every PS2 game out there, so I can't say that it can just run every PS2 game, but I will say that the Edge Plus is more than adequate in handling a majority of PS2 titles that are compatible with this emulator. Next up, we have GameCube and Wii emulation using the official Dolphin emulator. Looking at GameCube emulation first. Here we have running Soul Calibur 2 with Vulcan at 2x resolution. Performance is stable and consistent, and gameplay-wise, uh, well, I suck at this game, so sorry about that. Easier to run GameCube titles like Soul Calibur 2 and Mario Sunshine ran pretty well at 2x resolution. Some of the harder games still did require dropping down to the native resolution to be playable though. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 was one of those games, and here we have it running with Vulcan at native resolution. Performance is a little all over the place with the FPS seriously dipping whenever there are a lot of particles on the screen. It's certainly playable, but it's not running at full speed. Then again, this one is a hard GameCube title to emulate. Based on my testing, as long as it's compatible with Dolphin, GameCube emulation works okay on the Edge Plus. But whether or not you'll be able to take advantage of things like 2x resolution, that, that very much depends on the game in question. And it's a similar, if not more mixed case with Wii emulation. Here I have the Wii version of Spider-Man's Shattered Dimensions running at native resolution using Vulcan. There is occasional dip in the FPS, but it is a playable experience. I found that Wii emulation is okay on this device as long as you stick to playing games at native resolution. This was certainly the case with Spider-Man Edge of Time and Tekken vs. Capcom. There were of course a few lighter Wii games like Mario Bros Wii and Sonic Color that ran okay at 2x resolution with maybe an occasional lag here and there, but those games were more of an exception than anything. To be clear, I'm not disappointed by this performance and I'm not putting this out to be seen as a negative. The fact that Wii emulation on smartphone is even possible at this quality is impressive enough if you ask me. So as long as you go into it with tempered expectations and stick to lighter Dolphin compatible Wii games, this device should be pretty good for Wii emulation. And finally, I'm gonna wrap this up with PS Vita emulation with the Vita 3K emulator. And as I record this footage, I am running release 4 of Vita 3K. Now here I have Shovel Knight running at native resolution with default settings. And aside from maybe an occasional graphical glitch, the game is running at playable quality. Moving on to a more graphically complex game, running Catherine Full Body here at native resolution with default settings. The game does seem to be running stable, but there are weird graphical artifacts and occasional lag during gameplay. Not that one should necessarily hold that against the Vita 3K emulator or the Edge Plus. Vita 3K just recently came out on Android in February of 2023, and it's still early days for this emulator. It has a lot of bugs and glitches, and there are features and games that just don't work on it right now. At the same time though, Vita 3K is getting updated regularly, and in the past two months I have seen the emulator significantly improve with each of these updates. And these improvements have resulted in a better, more stable Vita emulation experience on the Edge Plus. Based on that, I don't think we're that far off from a future where Vita 3K can be used on the Edge Plus to emulate Vita games at full speed without graphical issues or lag. Having gone through all that, it might seem like the Edge Plus is a solid device to get for mobile gaming and emulation, and that assessment wouldn't necessarily be wrong. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that this device's overall gaming performance might involve sacrificing the comfort of your fingies. Cause uh, holding onto the Edge Plus after an hour or so of gaming often leads me to utter, wow, this thing is hot, and not in the visual sense. Now to be clear, it's not like the Edge Plus gets hot to the point where the phone is burning you or anything that extreme. It just heats up to the point where it becomes uncomfortable to hold onto for long periods of time. And I understand that we should expect passively cooled phones to heat up during intensive gaming or emulation. It's just that the Edge Plus heats up in a manner that is outside of what I've come to expect with passively cooled devices. Like the Edge Plus gets uncomfortably hot very, very quickly. And there does seem to be an explanation behind this. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip found in this device is known for heating up very quickly and having thermal issues and being very power hungry. All of which is not ideal for a smartphone and its battery life. And if you just went, wait a minute, did he just say battery life? Yeah, I did notice a huge dip in battery life whenever I did anything intensive gaming or otherwise on the Moto Edge Plus. And similar to what I said about smartphones heating up, it is not necessarily surprising to see battery consumption spike when doing something intense on a smartphone. It's just the degree to which it happens on the Moto Edge Plus does feel a little unusual and is definitely noticeable. So obviously there are flaws to gaming on the Motorola Edge Plus 2022 edition, and some of these flaws are understandably a deal breaker for certain people. Despite these flaws though, I do still think that the Edge Plus can be worthy of consideration for those interested in a device for mobile gaming and emulation at the right 
price. At the original MSRP of around $1,000, the Motorola Edge Plus 2022 edition doesn't really make sense for really anyone in 2023, whether we're talking smartphone or just a gaming device. It doesn't make sense. The Moto Edge Plus though does get regularly discounted at places like Best Buy for around $500. And at that price point, I can see this device being worth it for some people. Like for anyone in the market right now for a capable tablet or smartphone to use specifically for mobile gaming and emulation, I can see this device being very appealing at the $500 price point. Not to mention, I'm recording this in early April 2023, and Motorola seems to be on track to announce and release a successor to this device soon. And when a successor comes out, it's possible that Best Buy and others will further discount the Motorola Edge Plus 2022 edition to move out inventory. And for less than $500, I think a lot of people will be willing to overlook some of the flaws with this device. Anyway, that's gaming on the Motorola Edge Plus 2022 edition. It isn't the perfect gaming device, far from it, and it does have some flaws that one should be aware of. At the same time though, I still do think that this is a very capable and powerful device. It runs native Android games very well and can be quite impressive in the emulation department too. And that's all I have for you guys today. This one was a bit of an unusual video since I don't usually make videos about gaming or emulation. Uh, this channel is more focused on things like Chromebooks. So if you're not interested in stuff like Chromebooks, then generally don't subscribe, which is a bit of a weird thing to say at the end of the video. But if you found this video informative or entertaining in any way, shape or form, I would appreciate it if you give this video a like. Thanks for watching.